again and rose again. Amazing love. that you prepare your offerings and tithes and gifts, whatever you want to give to God to show your love to him. Okay, we're going to ask the ushers to come forward to help us on this. Take this time to talk to God, pray to him, meditate on him. Join our hearts in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your provision and your constant daily care for us. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our choir will be sharing a song. It's called uh, The Reason for Christmas. So as it is December 1st and I would assume that most of you have not finish your Christmas shopping, even though you went through Brown Thursday, Black Friday, uh, what, Super Saturday, whatever it is, and today's Super Sunday. Remember that it's not a gift exchange, okay? We're not just having a party, but we're celebrating uh, Jesus' birth. And that is the main thing, that people would see God and have Jesus in their heart. 
the reason for Christmas. This morning, we're going to do something a little bit different in our service. We're going to have a, a baptism in the service. And this morning, we have 10 candidates who will be sharing their testimonies uh, with us to encourage us, to remind us of the faithfulness of God and what he's been doing in their lives. Um, the Bible teaches 
uh, baptism, Jesus told his disciples as part of the disciple making process to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so we teach baptism here and we practice baptism. Baptism is a uh, physical representation of a spiritual reality. Uh, in baptism, we have candidates who come down into the water and who are immersed into the water and who rise up out of the water to illustrate uh, the spiritual reality that in Jesus Christ, we die to our sins because Jesus has died for our sins. We die with Jesus. We rise from the grave as Jesus did to uh, currently to uh, newness of life as Christians and with the hope of the resurrection before us. And so that's why uh, this, this um, ordinance is practiced within the church and that's why it's so uh, instructive for us because it shows uh, the spiritual reality that's taking place through the physical representation of baptism. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to call forth the candidates one at a time, and they will be sharing uh, their testimonies uh, with you all. And they're a little bit nervous. Some are, some are a little bit younger. Some are a little bit older. But all together, they represent uh, the body of Christ in that Jesus Christ has uh, opened their eyes to their need for the Savior. They have put their trust in Christ for the forgiveness of their sins and the hope and the promise of eternal life. Our first candidate that will be baptized here is Christine Lau. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I'm really glad my mom, my sister, my mother-in-law, and my aunt are here to see and witness this, um, along with my husband. Um, let me tell you my story. Uh, before I accepted Christ, um, I was a pretty lonely girl. I didn't belong to any particular group. And I was asking, always asking myself, what's wrong with me? Um, I wasn't particularly great in any aspect of life. Not really funny, not really beautiful, not too smart. And I wasn't spectacular in any way. Um, how was I worthy um, of love and attention and great care? Um, yet God knew and orchestrated uh, this uh, environment to let me know that I belonged to him. One morning, finding myself yet alone, I was um, having a quiet time of reflection with God in which I asked him, um, Lord, what's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, God convicted me that I was not going to church for him, um, but was looking for fun. And from that moment on, I realized and have always remembered how intimate God is. Um, he knows that other priorities higher than him would lead to my destruction. Um, and after that revelation, I felt a sense of reverence and love, which can only come from him. God accepted me uh, as I was, and I felt close to him the moment I accepted him. Um, I felt all that someone I've never seen or talked with can know my innermost thoughts, not judge me, and then meet me where I am. Love is who he is. He can't help but be loving, because he is love. This timeless truth has helped me through my darkest times. No matter how I am, boring, frustrated, impatient, selfish, angry, hurt, having a low self-esteem, no matter which way I choose to walk, he is there to take me back in his arms. No questions asked. He is unchanging. He was, is, and always will be all the names I cry out for. Savior, provider, father, and friend. Because I know his love, I'm able to pour love out to those who need it. His love empowers me to fill in the needs of complete strangers. Love people who have hurt me, enrich my marriage with Ed, and persevere to bring up my children as I thrive to live by, to love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind, and all my strength. Thank you. Christine, because you have put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Next candidate is Haley Ann Engel. <laughs> um, hi, 
Um, I accepted Christ when I was five years old. Um, my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Carrie, told me that, um, told the class that if you accepted Jesus into your heart, you would get to go to heaven. And so I thought about it and I said, oh, okay, sure. And then um, when I got home, I told my mom and she prayed with me and I accepted Christ. Um, I was really young, so I didn't understand what being a Christian meant. Um, so I, and I don't think I really understood for a while. Um, I knew that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, that we should pray to God to bless the food before we ate. But um, the fact that I needed to be in a deep personal relationship with him didn't hit me until middle school. And ever since then, God has been a much bigger part of my personal life than he was. And um, this past summer, I was in MSSD, and we read a book called What on Earth Am I Here For? And there was a section in the book about baptism. And it said that you needed, you were not supposed to wait to get baptized. And as I thought about it, I realized that it was true. People in the Bible got baptized the day they accepted Christ. And you don't have to wait until you're spiritually mature. And ever since I found out about that, God really put it on my heart to think about getting baptized. And I decided that I would get baptized not just as an outward sign of my faith, but also as an inward reminder about who I'm living for. And I encourage everybody here to be baptized. I know it's really scary, but um, we should never be afraid to show people our faith. Thank you. Haley, because you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Just to let you know that the, uh, if you see that it looks like I'm pushing them hard, it's only because... <laughs> The River Jordan's running a little low this morning, okay? <laughs> Our next candidate is Joelle Renee Crook. Christians to get baptized soon. It's not the kind of thing that you have to wait for because it's just like showing publicly that you're a Christian and that you want to live for God. Thank you for coming today and I hope you have a great day. <laughs> Joelle, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> B 
because you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Next candidate is Mary Chen. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mary Chen, and today I have a so excited day, and can come here with to the God. He forgive me my sin and my pain, taking care of me and taking care of my family. And I feel so great and so exciting. And I go and say thank you and say, say for my life, not that much pain. And I can believe God always is helping me beside me, love me, and give me this wonderful time to come be baptized and believe Jesus be my Lord. He's the kingdom. Thank you. Mary, because you have put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our next candidate is Winnie. Chan. Hi, um, so I grew up at Cornerstone um, was here since I was in senior preschool and I accepted Christ into my heart when I was five with my kindergarten teacher. She woke me up from my nap. <laughs> She's like, she, told, you know, she told me stories and um, talked to me and um, eventually asked me um, if I wanted to accept Christ and really I said yes and all I wanted to do was go back to sleep. Um, then, as a five-year-old, um, as a kindergartner, I didn't really understand what it meant to be a Christian. Um, I lived on my everyday life just as any normal child would, and I really started to um, understand what it meant when I was about um, in middle school and high school with I'm um, going to choir, coming to church, and I'm um, going to fellowship. And though there were a lot of um, trials and ups and downs that came up, um, eventually um, I always knew to go back to God, no matter how long it took. Um, as I went to college, um, it was a little bit more difficult to be me, to be a Christian. Um, being in Cornerstone, it's easy because you're surrounded by Christians, um, surrounded by teachers who um, love and care about you. But when you go to college, it's completely different for me because I was here. Um, and I chose very wisely who I spoke to, who I opened up myself to, and um, it wasn't until my third year in college when I met a group of people who generally cared about me and how, um, how I'm doing, and um, they really wanted to know about me. And that was when I was able to open up and see that um, there are people out there who do care about you and who can love you. Um, not long after college started, there was um, a big family problem that arised, and nothing I'm going to share into detail about, but um, it really showed me how perfect God's timing is. Um, not long after, you know, I, I didn't understand why Sophia asked me to become a cornerstone singer. I was like, me? No way! But really, I prayed about it, and I really felt God saying, say yes, be a part of the group. And, um, it's really shown me throughout like five years or so that I've been in, a, in the group that um, he's really provided for me and been there for me and um, he's been there every step of the way, um, providing me with such an amazing group to sing, travel, and to worship him with. Um, 
if it weren't for God, if it weren't for him, um, I wouldn't be here before you today um, in this pool about to get baptized as soon as I stop talking. And um, <laughs> it's just, I'm nothing without God. And um, that's really why I'm here getting baptized because I know if it weren't for him um, and it weren't for his continuous um, provision and um, always watching over me, I wouldn't be here um, expressing my faith to you and not fearing um, what other people think about me. Thank you. Winnie, because you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our next candidate is Edward Lau. Hi, everyone. Um, the term Christian didn't have too much of a meaning to me back when I was an adolescent. Um, I was first exposed to uh, the Christian faith when I was uh, going to a high school basketball uh, tournament that was organized by, um, by a Christian organization. And the people, who, uh, p the people over there who professed to be, okay, sounds good. The people there who professed to be Christians there did not seem to be any, anything different than people who didn't uh, profess the faith. And so they, in addition, they even, you know, uh, they, they, they were slanderous with their words. They were prideful. They were exclusive. And so it didn't, it didn't seem like something that I wanted to be a part of. And um, what, what made it even further worse was that in school, I was learning that, oh, you know, uh, science can, can explain everything about the universe. There's no need for God and there's no need for Christianity. And it was all a hoax. Um, in college, I had even gone far enough to the point where I had even um, ridiculed, I've even um, sort of ganged up on other people who said that they were Christians. And so uh, back, in, you know, back in the year 50 or so AD, there's this uh, man named Saul, and he was a persecutor of Christians. And, and looking back, that is how I sort of uh, related myself. I was, I was almost like a persecutor of Christians. I was a skeptic. I was a critic. But uh, God had a plan. He... Uh, he brought me to a high school in which I really didn't want to go to, and uh, and there it was. I, had, I I met a friend at this school that had brought me to the the college group at Cornerstone, and the the college group, the leaders and everyone had um, showed me lots of love. Uh, they were really patient. They were praying for me, um, and it was even there that uh, my girlfriend at the time was also very patient, very loving to me. But it was still uh, a very long a very long way because I had many burning questions that I just needed to have answered. And so it was uh, not until a Easter musical here at Cornerstone that um, I, I had heard the message, you know, many, many times. I heard this message again, and then I felt that God had reached out and touched me. And so what happened was I was sitting in the pew like many of you are right now. My, my, blood, pr my blood pressure went up. I was starting to shake a little bit. My palms were sweating. Uh, I had elevated blood pressure and, you know, and everything. And I was thinking, wow, this is really, really strange. I've never had anything like this happen to me before. And I thought... This, is, this really must be Jesus Christ saying, hey, Ed, it's time for you to realize who I am and what I am about to do in your life. And so at that time, I had said, all right, I think this is, you know, Jesus, you are real. I will come and I will accept you for, as my personal Lord and Savior. But even after that point, I was still, I wasn't really on fire for God. I, I had still had um, done many things in my old ways. Um, I, my, my marriage had started off really, really rockly. Um, I had not been very uh, loving or not very, you know, uh, emotionally detached from my, from my young children. But it was uh, a group of young men that had encouraged me along in my faith. And then there was also at, uh, at a time at work when I had met a, a, a fellow coworker who had challenged me on the veracity or the, um, uh, whether the Bible is real. You know, he, he challenged me whether or not the Bible is real. And it was after, through that journey of understanding who Jesus is, that I was convinced Jesus is a person that actually existed, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago. He is God, and he, is a, he can be a part of your life. And after realizing that, my life has been enriched. I have now have a, you know, a, a very wonderful marriage. I have 
been able to talk and share about uh, Christ to other people who have who God has brought to me. So thank you for listening to my testimony. I really appreciate you guys being here. Edward, because you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our next candidate is Erwin Flores. You weren't kidding when you said that was warm. <laughs> All right, hi everyone, I'm, I'm Erwin and uh, when I was growing up, you know, I was a very neglected child, I guess. My family didn't really care for me stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure all you've heard that kind of story a million times before. I mean, and uh, I mean, I'm just living, I'm just trying to live, trying to live day by day. And uh, in high school, I met a, I met a friend, uh, Felipe. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, I just go to his house every day after school and play video games with him. It's just not a big deal to me, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, we just became friends, I guess. And uh, his family, they, they're, they're believers, and uh, I guess they tried to expose me to Christ. And they tried to expose me to Christ, and, uh, you know, I didn't really think too much of it, you know. I'm, I'm still trying to deal with, you know, all the stuff I've had to deal with growing up. And um, all of a sudden, they decided to go to a church, and uh, I decided to go with them. We were there for about a year, and then... Uh, we came here to Cornerstone, and uh, at Christmas thing last year, uh, we got one of those yellow cards, you know, if we wanted more information about Christ, you know, and uh, I filled one out, and I turned it in, and Clifford gives me a call a week after, and he asked me if I want to go to lunch sometime, and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. So he spent, it was more than lunch, you know, I had to help him carry a bunch of DVD players to his car, <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, we had lunch, and, uh, he talked. He talked to me about this, and you know, he talked me through about what the, about the spiritual laws and about what Christ did. And he asked me, you know, are you willing to take Christ as your Lord and Savior? You know, and I tensed up. You know, my hands were like my hands were bald, and I'm pretty sure Clifford couldn't see it, but I was gritting my teeth so hard I could have probably broken them. And you know, this was probably something I've been waiting for for the longest time, and. I said yes right there, and everything changed in that moment, and it just feels great. And, you know, this year, being a believer ha has been better than, you know, the last seven years before that, and I'm just thankful to the Lord for all the people, this whole congregation, and the royal family. Just thank you, everyone, and thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs> Aaron, because you have put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Our next candidate is Matthew Trois. Um, first off, I'm thankful I can see over this thing. <laughs> um, uh, being one of the shortest persons I know, you might find it kind of funny to think that I was really proud when I was young. Uh, I used to think, oh, if I was taller, I would be the best of the best, right? You know, I already have the charming good looks and everything. Uh, but, uh, so, I was born in Singapore. Uh, my parents were hard workers, to say the least. 
Uh, my dad's been in tech crew since I was born. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've always been surrounded by church. My grand-aunt was very uh, Christian. Uh, I used to go to church every Sunday. I was a, a good Christian. But uh, I always thought that God be uh, belonged to me. That, oh, uh, dear God, thank you for whatever, and uh, please give me this. I'm fine. If he doesn't give me it, fine. I'm okay. I will, I will be fine by myself. I don't need him. Then I came here. Uh, my dad got a job here. We moved. I didn't really like it at first, but uh, I know a lot of people here now, and they know me, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, and I'm, I'm actually I'm pretty happy. I was pretty happy. Uh, and, but I still had that pride with me. Uh, I, uh, if you, uh, a while ago, five years ago, pretty long, uh, I think I got hit by a car. I'm still here. <laughs> uh, and I still thought, oh, this is nothing. I went to New York a while ago. An ambulance almost hit me. I'm still here. Uh, but I always thought that uh, I didn't need anyone. I could do it myself. But just recently this summer, I went back to Singapore for a small vacation. I uh, uh, met some family. Uh, I haven't seen them in a really long time. And it just occurred to me that they've done more than I could comprehend to make me who I am. Uh, my, uh, my grandparents every week would uh, bring me to the tutor and rain or uh, rain. Uh, uh, they, uh, they always kept coming, and I didn't know how hard it was for them because they were really old. <laughs> uh, I, and then one night, right a few days before I was about to leave uh, Singapore, uh, I just sat in my room, uh, just thinking. It was really late at night. I was busy gaming, uh, and I just sat there in the dark, thinking. What did I do to deserve such people in my life? I couldn't think of anything. My grandma, uh, on my mom's side, um, she had dementia, uh, but she still remembered me as clear as day. If you lose your memory and you only remember a few things, and, you, and I was one of them, I think that's not the best thing to remember. But I just thought, God, you've given me so much. And I just realized that one night, and what a bad Christian I've been. And now I'm trying to rededicate myself as best as I can be. And uh, try to follow God. Matthew, because you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Our next candidate is Peter Thomas Marr. This is so warm. Do not, do not cover this. Oh. And step back so I can right there. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Peter, and uh, I'll just like tell my testimony, I guess. And I, I accepted Christ when I was 
around second grade, my parents wanted just asked me because like, they told me like that I would be more like I would understand it better if I was older, and they asked me. So they told me I could accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I could uh, have eternal life and go to heaven. So I accepted uh, Christ that day. I've uh, been a Christian ever since, going to church every Sunday, I think, almost every Sunday. And I guess my faith hasn't really been uh, that deep. I'm not really a deep thinker, but I guess since now I'm in high school fellowship, my leaders, they kind of got me thinking a little bit more deeper about things because um, it was a little different in middle school fellowship, but it's a lot different in high school fellowship. So I started reading this thing, uh, this book. I got it at a Johnny and Friends retreat. It's a retreat that is for my sister. Like it, they take care of her and stuff. And uh, there's, one, one, there's one of them that said, you can never have too much of grace in uh, Christ. And I thought about it and like, it made me think that I would, um, I can maybe think a little deeper and go and, and read that devotional a little more instead of uh, not reading it at all, like the Bible. And I think now my parents actually asked me if I want to get baptized. I asked God, and he, he said yes, and I think that I'm ready, and... Um, I'm ready to think a little deeper about the Bible, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Peter, because you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And our last candidate is Wesley Chung. <laughs> uh, hello, um, my name is Wesley, and um, just like a lot of kids today, I was born and raised in Cornerstone. I've lived here my whole life, and my parents are both um, serving. Um, so I've really not, I haven't really known anything else for a long time. I accepted Christ when I was in second grade, and I came to a church and fellowship and Sunday school. Tried to do all the normal things um, that I thought Christians did, and I thought if I did all these things, that God would take care of me. Um, but uh, as we all know, life doesn't really work that way. Um, as I started to get older, around middle school and high school, I kind of started seeing what the real world was like. Uh, just a lot of manipulation and deceit, a lot of anger, and I've lost a lot of really genuine relationships um, through those years, and it kind of made me really skeptical and almost a little angry and resentful towards God and church, because I thought I was doing everything right, but at the same time all these bad things were happening to me. Um, so I was really... Uh, I was really hurt, and that's why I kind of started wearing this Christian mask, just to keep people off my back, I guess, especially with my parents. Um, as our fights at home got a little more intense, I started to uh, seclude myself uh, everywhere I went, and I started seeking pleasure from the world. And um, looking back, I know God was continually trying to call me out, but I wasn't listening. Uh, I had a very stone heart. So um, when it was time for college, I was determined to get away from it all. I was determined to run as far as I could. And I picked Riverside, California, which is the middle of nowhere. It's like a desert, about an hour from LA. Yeah. And so I thought I was, I thought my problems would be different. 
or they would be less severe. But little did I know, God chased me down. He found me in the darkest corners of college, where a lot of you might know I'm talking about. He found, he sent a messenger to help me to realize that this world is an illusion and that only his love is real. Um, and just the fact that this whole time for the past 20 years, I've been trying to hide myself from everyone and God and he still sent someone down to, to just try to save what was left of me. And ever since then, um, I started changing my attitude towards life. I started getting more active in my spiritual walk, not just saying things, but actually doing them and living them out. Um, really, really, really trying to live up to the weighty title of a Christian. Not what the image of a Christian is, but the lifestyle that my God, Jesus, walked. And I am standing here today um, as a witness to his love. and. I can't wait to see what he has in store for me next. And I just want to end this my uh, testimony with a verse from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 17. It says, uh, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Uh, behold, the old has passed away, and the new has come. And I cannot wait for the day where uh, I can celebrate um, all those loved ones that I have in my life who can have their old selves pass away and be revived by God, like I, like I, like I have, and thank you. <laughs> Wesley, because you have put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So you've heard the 10 testimonies here of the candidates, and they've shared about you know, how God has been, is real in their lives and then some of the changes they went through and how they came to realize that. Not every one of them is the same, um, but one thing that they do have in common is this idea of a realization that the way that they're going is not the way it should be, but that God has a way that is right, not their own way. And so, um, uh, in coming to faith in Christ, they recognized that as true Christ followers, they wanted to publicly uh, confess that. And that's what this idea of baptism is about. And um, as you've heard them talk, you know, uh, you recognize that some of the things they said is about, you know, a deeper walk of faith, a, a stronger commitment, all those types of things. It, it's not because they're special. It's because they want to follow Jesus, which is what all of us are called to do. And so I share that with you because I want to encourage you. Sometimes people think, oh, baptism is for the special, the holy ones, those people who will eventually become pastors or something like that. And that's not the teaching of the New Testament at all. And so I just want to encourage you that if you had not been baptized, that you should seek to get baptized. Talk to Reverend Fong about that and we'll get you through the foundations class because we do like to give you a clear understanding about this as, uh, as part of our um, stewardship of the gospel. So uh, this concludes our baptism portion of the service. Thank you all for coming out and encouraging uh, the candidates. I'm sure they felt very um, happy that you were here to, to witness uh, this big step for them. Thank you. Very nice. We're going to have all the 10 uh, bap baptized people come up to the, to the stage uh, after worship, after we have the benediction. So if you'd like to take pictures then of the whole group, uh, uh, we'll do that. Um, let's see. We have a table over there. I forgot to do something. This is our Advent table. We have the candles to bring light. Uh, if you look in the front of your bulletin, uh, it says the four-letter word there. Okay. 
Uh, that is to signify the first uh, day of Advent, uh, hope. Okay, and I hope that you would uh, have hope that God can save you, redeem you, and change you into a new creature, just like Wesley was talking about in 2 Corinthians 5. All right, that God can save anybody, the vilest of sinners, uh, the worst, uh, um, amazing grace, uh, how sweet the sound, say, a wretch, uh, how, no matter how wretched you are, that God can forgive your sin, give you a new start, and uh, fill you with his love and his Holy Spirit, all right? Okay, uh, we're going to sing one song, page 182. I like this site. Okay, this is, this is a kind of a song that says, go tell the people everywhere, okay? With the 10 testimonies that you've heard, these people, they might not be Bible experts or scholars. They might not know about creation and evolution. They might not know about how Jesus uh, uh, healed the blind person from, 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 uh, from birth or raised Lazarus from the dead, even though he stunk after his body and corpse de decayed and his, the gray matter you know, disintegrated or whatever happened, okay? Jesus can do anything, okay? He's the creator. And he uh, has the power. He's omnipotent and omniscient. And he can, uh, he is God. And we need to turn to him. This is called Go Tell It on the Mountain. Let's sing it together. Go tell it on the mountain. person the people around you again okay and maybe behind you and in front of you that's one way to go tell it on the mountain okay whether you're at your Trader Joe's or Safeway or Target or the gas station or wherever you are just say Merry Christmas and add whatever you want to, to add to it okay God's peace be with you. Jesus loves you. Anything like that, okay? And point them to God and give glory to God. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mr. Randy. Yes, Reverend Fong, this is the time of our service where we welcome our guests. So as I call your name, would you please stand so the congregation can welcome you after service? Emily Tove has brought a guest, uh, Rachel Gomez. Would you please stand? <laughs> welcome. Mabuhai. <laughs> Also, if you are a guest or you brought a guest, please take this opportunity to introduce yourself or your guest. Alice, welcome Alice. Okay. 
Okay, a lot of shy people. I'm gonna, if you're a relative of any of those 10 people, okay, or if you're a friend and this is your first time here uh, worshiping with us, would you stand up please, okay? All the relatives and any first time, just stand up, stand up, okay, come on. We got 10 people, there should be 100 of you out there, okay? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, I'm sure some of you are just so shy. Pastor Scott, any last words or anything? Okay, so again, after the worship, after the benediction, I'm going to ask the candidates to come up here. You combed your hair already? Okay, you got the water out of your ears? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Whatever hair you have, it's in the right place. Okay. I apologize. I'm not, I'm not sensitive enough to some people. Right? Okay, let's have, we have some announcements. We welcome all of you. Okay, and uh, uh, some, some people couldn't make it today. So I you know, told them to uh, look, uh, look on our website and then they can, they can listen to Matthew's uh, testimony over and over and over again. Okay. <clears throat> and the rest, uh, the other nine too. Okay, okay uh, next slide. Um, we have some meetings today, uh, this week. Okay, we have a Sunday school teachers meeting immediately after worship in the cafetorium. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, all of you are welcome to come to the Emeryville Public Market over in uh, Emeryville, um, Shell Mound Road, okay? Sorry, Shell Mound Boulevard, something like that. Uh, if you're in the Emeryville area, we meet from noon to one, and uh, we'll be in the food court area, okay? Uh, this Wednesday, the leadership fellowship leaders, we have a potluck dinner at 6.30, uh, optional. Uh, bring something, though, if you want to eat. And then we'll have a regular leaders meeting at 7.30 in the Romans Calf. And then on Thursday, we're having a sweet lunch down at Rome, uh, Crocker Galleria, um, Sutter, and, Sutter and Montgomery around there. Okay, and any of you welcome to come and have lunch uh, okay, with us. Uh, bring your own lunch, all right. Okay, so that's 12 noon to 1. Okay, next slide we have... Did you say Merry Christmas to somebody already? Okay, twice, right? Okay, good, all right. Uh, can you do it one more time? Now. <laughs> okay, three's the charm, right? Okay. Uh, we're, celebrating, uh, Mary, we're celebrating Christmas this year at our church, uh, starting with the Mandarin department. Uh, on September 7th, which is this coming Saturday, we're having a Mandarin Christmas sing right here in this room. All right? Uh, so tickets are available at the, at, the, um, at the congregation and our school site, our church site, and Harvest Bookstore, I think. All right, so you're welcome to get some tickets uh, because we have to sort of cover, uh, we, have, we, have, we have refreshments, appetizers afterwards, okay? So it'll cover the cost of the food afterwards, okay? Uh, next slide, uh, the next weekend, on the 14th, on Saturday, we have our Christmas, Christmas, Cantonese Christmas sing at uh, two o'clock and 7.30. We have a matinee performance for those who, who can't come out at night or can't drive or just can't see or something like that. Okay, and then, uh, you know, night vision. Okay. So uh, 7.30 for the evening one, all right? So tickets are still available for those also. And then the following weekend on the 21st, uh, 21st and 22nd, we'll be at the Scottish Rite Auditorium. We'll be there for worship also. And our English uh, musical, is, uh, English Christmas thing is called Come In From The Code. So if you feel that this world is very cold and evil and uh, like Wesley say, just, just all kind of bad things happening, maybe you'd like to come to this and bring your friends and bring them into the warmth of the sun, the sunlight of God, okay? So uh, tickets are available for that also. All right, okay, uh, next slide. There is no next slide, okay. So we're about ready. Uh, we're going to stand and sing our doxology, and we'll have a prayer, and then we'll have the candidates come up, okay? Let's sing together doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, my creatures here below. Praise Him, my
Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and, give, and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Tell it on the mountain. Baptismal candidates, would you come up, please? Yes.